Well, thanks, Nate. I just want to say, uh, first I want to say congrats to uh, Nate Oates and Christy Curry on great starts to their season. That was a heck of a good win last night in Fayetteville. And I know um, both teams are going to have great runs here down the stretch. But we're just, um, you know, this is year 27 for us. It's Team 27. And um, I'm just very pleased so far. It's been a great group to coach, low maintenance, um, great grades. We had six of the 20 um, had 4.0s in the fall. So 30% of the team was a 4.0, which is pretty awesome. And um, I'm just really, really excited and ready to go. All right, so for those of you in the room, if you have a question, just raise your hand and we'll get a microphone to you. And for those in the Zoom, either hit the raise hand button or throw something in the chat and we'll get something to you. So uh, Kirk, we can go ahead and start with you. Uh, you always have a tough schedule. Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, you know, we we're never going to turn down an opportunity to go down to Clearwater to play in uh, the tournament down there. And we have, you know, Duke was in Super Regionals. UCLA was in the World Series. Central Florida was in Super Regionals. Uh, Indiana is a good team from the Big Ten. And then Florida State. And obviously, you know, one of the best teams in the country. So to get to play those five uh, basically on a neutral site in the second weekend, uh, that's a huge, huge uh, win for our schedule. Um, so, and then we go to Texas, and you know they were the national runner-up, and it's the weekend before SEC starts, and all three teams in that tournament are really good. So, I think it's a good mix. Uh, and then SEC is going to be as usual. Uh, every weekend is going to be difficult, and uh, hopefully that that weekend right before um, we host Arkansas on March 18th. But the weekend before at Texas will be a really, really good uh, uh, opportunity for us to play some good teams and then step right into SEC. All right, we'll go to the back of the room with Stu. I know that about this time of year, everybody's kind of chomping at the bit, ready to play, ready to get out there. But has this offseason felt increasingly long? Just because maybe of the way it wrapped up last season or wrapped up a little bit earlier than the team is used to. So has it really felt like, I don't even know the last time I played something? How would you go? I think that personally, school and softball every year here goes by short and shorter. But of course, it feels longer just because we're so excited to get out there. But the team makes the days really fun, which means short. So it's gone by pretty quick for us. You want to go? Yeah, sure. For me, uh, being in the transfer portal obviously made for a very long summer. But once I got here, the time has just been flying by. I mean, it felt like the whole fall was about two weeks long, and uh, Christmas break couldn't have been shorter. <laughs> I was so excited to get back here. And I think, you know, we, uh, we changed the schedule just a little bit, our calendar, and you have so many days throughout the year to practice. And we, we went a little shorter in the fall, and we started uh, Sunday, this past Sunday, and that's the earliest we've ever started. And so far, the weather's cooperated. Today might be a little bit of a washout. But um, you know, we got those three extra days in. We started school here uh, at Alabama yesterday, so that was the day off. But um, I think those uh, early practices, and we had two days because we didn't have classes, uh, I think that's going to pay off um, when we start. All right, we'll actually go to the Zoom with uh, Ms. Taylor. You gotta remember, unmute yourself if you can. There you go. <laughs> hey, Montana. Um, so I was just wondering, um, you know, after winning gold in the World Games over the summer, what are you taking from that experience to kind of make you better for the season? I was really fortunate to play with so many great athletes in the World Games, and luckily it was in Birmingham, which was right down the road, which is so awesome because it felt like I was at a home game. Um, but it was so great to learn from them and not only the pitchers, which obviously that they, they were some great pitchers on staff that are still reaching out to me today and I get to learn from them. So I think that that is something that I get to take and their leadership styles, just every person's different. And I think it's great to bring that to this team too. And Faith, if you don't mind, why don't we go to you? Why don't you just walk us through kind of your journey through the transfer portal and what ultimately led to Alabama and what uh, do you like about being here in Alabama? Yeah, of course. So honestly, I had an opportunity to go on some amazing visits, um, and I didn't see a clear front runner in my head going into those opportunities. 
Um, and all of that kind of took a turn the second that I set foot on campus here. I remember going to the hotel uh, after the first night and my dad looked at me and he said, if you don't commit here, then I will. <laughs> and I was like, okay, <laughs> calm down. But uh, it, what really sold me over was the way Murph talks about the team and all of us. And it really wasn't about like game winning plays or even winning a national championship or things like that that sold me over, but the culture itself, talking about Moodita, talking about uh, situations where teammates stepped up for one another in a friendship way or like bought into each other in order to win a game. It, that, it moved me. He started tearing up and I think in that moment I was ready to commit. <laughs> All right, we'll go to Eric Lopez in the Zoom. Murph, uh, good to talk to you, Coach. Uh, I'm curious, obviously, we heard from Faith. Talk about the new faces on this team and what you expect as far as contributions from the, some of the new faces that Alabama fans will get familiar with. Well, Eric, it was good Good to see you. Thanks for being on this morning. I appreciate it. Hopefully, it's sunny where you're at. Definitely is. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, we have – now we have eight newcomers because we just added a young lady at semester. But, obviously, Faith, uh, MAC Player of the Year, um, you know, when I was looking at our roster the other day, we have uh, four grad kids, which is – that's the oldest roster, you know, that I can think of. And these two, Alex Shipman and Ashley Prangy. So a lot of experience between the four. And then um, five freshmen. And we have uh, a transfer from Michigan, uh, left-handed pitcher Lauren Essman. Third base, second base, first base, a transfer from North Alabama, a young lady from Danville, Alabama, Emma Broadfoot, and then the freshman. And I think it's a very, very athletic class. I think that's the thing that's um, – Michelle Diltz, our strength coach, did a great job all fall. But as the fall progressed, just day after day after day, it was just the athleticism of the team. And, you know, Faith, I think, is going to be a green light girl. I think we have seven on the team, which is pretty good for, you know, uh, for our program to have seven green light girls, uh, which means they can they have the green light to steal at any time, you know, unless I put on the stop sign. But very athletic and very interchangeable. So all the freshmen, you know, a Christian White, she could play all three outfield positions. Abby Dukeshire, a young lady from North Dakota, she could play all infield positions and all three outfield positions. Uh, Larissa Pruitt, all three outfield positions. Marley Giles, catcher first in outfield. And then Kinley, Kinley Cahalan, who's the young lady that just joined us, she can play all four infield positions. And she probably, we haven't, we're not going to do that, but she probably could catch for us as well. So very athletic. And um, they're like sponges, all of them. And that's been the, the most fun coaching them. They just, they're taking everything in and, and buying in. All right, we'll go back to Taylor in the Zoom. Hey, Coach. Um, just wondering how much uh, do you and maybe some returners from last year talk about the way that last season ended and use that as motivation for this year, or do you find motivation um, from somewhere else? And thanks for being on as well. Uh, we really haven't talked about it much at all. Um, you know, it's such a it, – it, it is it seems like a long time ago, but, um, you know, right when we started in August, um, we kind of, like, put that to bed and concentrating on Team 27. And I think everybody is highly motivated. Um, I think uh, Montana and probably Faith both have a chip on their shoulder. I know I do. And I think we've uh, used the offseason to learn, to grow, to get better. Coaching staff, players, everybody. I think if you're not a lifelong learner in this league, you're going to get your butt run over by the competition. So you have to continuous, continuously kind of reinvent yourself as a coach, as a person. And I think our entire program has done that this year from the top down. All right, we'll go to Kirk. Change up definitely wouldn't hurt anything, that's for sure. But we've been really fortunate again with um, Coach Lance coming. Again, we're really happy for Steph and her head coaching job. I know she's really happy, and we wish her the best. Obviously, we're still great friends. And Lance has came in and just done a great job, I think, with all the pitchers, just building a relationship. And we've all connected to him a lot. 
which has helped our coach player relationship too. And I think that I'm excited and happy to go to the bullpen every day to learn from them. And we're always trying new things. And you know, that's obviously uh, that's a big part of the staff. You know, a pitching coach is for a head coach in softball. That's like the biggest, I guess, um, spot because the game is called fast pitch for a reason. It's not called fast hit or fast run. It's called fast pitch for a reason. So it starts with, you know, the position is there's a circle drawn around it. So she's pretty important, and every pitcher on the team is pretty important to this game. So, but Lance has come in and done a great job. Uh, like Montana said, um, very, very um, easy transition. Um, he's got a great personality, and all the pitchers, I think, have taken to him. Um, so we're really happy he's here. And then another addition to the staff is Adam Marber, who um, he's our director of player development, which is a new spot that we were uh, granted in the summer. And he's been doing great things behind the scenes. So I think uh, staff-wise, um, it's a pretty good staff this year. Both Montana and Faith, can you both maybe talk a little bit about some of the messaging you and the senior leaders have uh, given to the team, both in the fall and the spring, some of the team goals or messages or things you've been sort of trying to uh, give them? I would say something that is one of my favorite things that Murph has ever told myself. You know, I think that I've been here the longest now on this team, but ever since day one, he's always said, first you got to come and just be yourself. And then that's when the whole team's going to get to know you and you're going to get to know them and we can just be a family. You know, you are when you step foot here, but you can really contribute and be happy whenever you can do that. So I think that that's something that we've really tried to instill in the freshmen, the newcomers, and you know, there's fifth years that are new. So I think that's important because like Murph said, we're always growing each year too. So always being your best and being your best self and best teammate. Yeah, it's been really exciting to kind of come in and be able to almost you get to reinvent yourself when you come to a new place a little bit. And I think the thing that has resonated with me the most this year is we've really talked about, you know, connecting with our teammates and affirming one another in a way that also allows us to hold others accountable, which both of those things are just going to drive us to our maximum potential. Because at the end of the day, I think that we do have really strong older leadership, a lot of great returners. But what's really going to shock people is how incredible and the amount of depth we have in our younger athletes. All right, we'll go to Eric in the Zoom. For Montana, as the leader of the pitching staff, talk about the, the rest of the pitchers behind you there. What stood out? What's impressed you about the pitchers uh, that you will be helping lead? I'm honored to even say that I am part of the pitching staff. Honestly, they're my favorite group to work with. I think it's fun every single day. And Lauren being a newcomer, you would have never guessed it. And I tell her this, I think, all the time. But she literally lights up a room every time she comes in it. And the same thing with Salt and Jayla. I'm just really fortunate to work with them. And I think they've grown so much. And they make me better. And I'm really excited this year to see them and I'll watch them all shine. All right, we'll go to Taylor. Uh, for the players, I was just wondering if there's anything like particularly funny that Coach does, or if you have any like good funny stories, um, maybe from the fall or summer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Murph is obviously a great guy. I think this was last year, but I'll tell it because it might make his face red. But one time he was so excited he did a toe touch in the locker room. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, yeah, OK, I have another one. So <laughs> the other day we were walking. <laughs> We were having our three-a-day, and we were coming in to lunch, and I knew this was going to happen. I've been around for a while, okay? This is one of the perks, and I specifically did not go first in the clubhouse for this reason, is I knew Murph was about to scare somebody, okay? It was, it was that type of day, and who did you get? You got somebody. It was the first one. I can't Aubrey. remember. Aubrey. Yep. Yeah. She jumped about two feet in the air, and he likes to scare people, so watch out. He's so <laughs> full of pranks. Uh, all the time. Yesterday, or not yesterday, whatever Kenley's first day of practice was, uh, we all got in and decided that, you know, we were all going to say the Pledge of Allegiance before practice, <laughs> just for fun. And then one day, Kristen White comes from class on Friday. She would come from class on Fridays a little bit later than the rest of us. 
and Murph is like, we're going to prank her. We're going to prank her. And she's in the locker room. This is on the fly. And if you look at Ashley's prangy, Ashley Prangy's TikTok, you'll see that uh, Kristen ended up performing a song and dance for us, and it was phenomenal. Like, it wasn't even a prank. She basically pranked Murph. Yeah, yeah I can confirm. They tried to scare me, too. So <laughs> All right, we'll go back to uh, Eric in the Zoom. Uh, coach, uh, I know you're a big sports fan, and I know I saw you, I think, uh, at an NCAA volleyball tournament match uh, in the fall in Wisconsin, so I, I think you'd be perfect to ask this question. Volleyball and women's soccer this fall, experimenting with seeding 32 teams to create more parity in the brackets and, and you know, some unique matchups. Would you, Do you think softball should follow that and, and perhaps look into maybe seeding 32 teams like volleyball and women's soccer did this fall? I definitely think so, and I think uh, – you know, my goddaughter is the manager of Wisconsin Volleyball, so that's why I was up there, and what a great atmosphere for women's sports. And, you know, all fall, all of us followed Alabama soccer uh, all the way to the Final Four, and they had an incredible run this year. So we're, uh, you know, this is the 50th anniversary of Title IX, and at the very beginning of the school year, we all went uh, bowling um, in Tuscaloosa, all the women's team. It was an outing for everybody and the coaches and players and athletes and anybody that had anything to do with women's athletics. And the, uh, basically the, the message was this was going to be the best year ever at Alabama for women's athletics. And cross country won the SEC. Soccer has won the SEC. And now we're going into basketball and, and softball's coming up. So hopefully we're going to carry the torch along with that. But I think it would definitely be um, good for the game. I think it would be um, good for matchups, you know, all the way through. I think uh, hopefully if, if it's, uh, you know, when they did that study a couple years ago, they found out that um, baseball, the NCAA was spending, I think, $16 million on um, postseason for baseball, which is awesome. I love college baseball. But they were spending $6 million on softball and it was the same amount of teams and that disparity was I really still can't figure out why 10 million more would go to one sport than the other so that is an opportunity to kind of close that gap because I certainly don't want to take anything away from baseball because they're doing great things but I think what would help us is to close the gap and go forward instead of taking away from baseball just add a little to softball and you know probably most of that is uh, financial because if you're going to do 32 that means you're going to have to move people around a lot more than you are now but I would be all for that all right any other questions from anybody all right Kurt you can wrap it up for us here I did cartwheels at home you know for <laughs> days um, I mean, obviously, you know, both young ladies up here are just incredible people, number one, and that's what we want in our program, top-notch people who also just happen to be top-notch softball players because you can do it all here. Uh, you can be an All-American. You can play for Team USA. You can work for Nike. You can work for ESPN. You know, you can do, do it all. So we're at a point in our program where we want the best of the best, both academically and athletically. And... Um, you know, right now we're we're getting those type of kids, and both of them belong in that category. But it was a great day uh, when she tweeted that um, she was coming back. All right, and we'll wrap it up there. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for being here, you guys. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.